Okay folks, so today uh, I got a few pieces of equipment that I got to get delivered, so we'll kind of try to take you guys along. Uh, we got the back of the little mini backhoe chain down here. So I already went through and took some pictures of the backhoe. Usually when I rent something out, I try to take a bunch of pictures of it, take a picture of the hour meter, and uh, just so that way we know what it looks like when it went out and how many hours it had on it. And just a little extra proof too that way if somebody damages it but uh, we'll go ahead and get the front end chained up here and I got to put my ramps and stuff up in the trailer and we will get taken off down the road here So that little D-ring I welded on the front of the tractor there really helps for chaining it down. And uh, I like it a lot better than using straps and it's just a lot better place to hook up. <laughs> So I did get some uh, new dump trailer tires here. Ordered those offline priority tire. It was pretty cheap, 12 ply tire. I think they end up being like $105 a piece or something like that. But I gotta get these rolled in my garage because FedEx guy just left them way out at the end of my driveway. So we'll roll them in the garage here and then uh, we'll get ready to take off down the road deliver the mini backhoe and then i gotta come back and pick up the mini excavator and uh we also got a new piece of equipment that we'll show you guys here at the end of the video Okay, so that ought to be a good place for the tires until a little bit later today when I get back and uh... Whew! Kind of dark in here now, but I'm gonna go ahead and get out here in the truck and get it heading down the road and we will pick you guys back up here in just a little bit. Okay guys, so uh, we got the backhoe dropped off and now we have the mini excavator loaded up and we are getting ready to go drop the mini excavator off. Now the mini excavator just came back off a of rental here just a while back and it's super dirty. It's a lot dirtier than what I would like it to be to be renting it out to somebody, but uh, I guess these people would be happy to have a dirty machine versus uh, no machine at all. But other than that, I hit it with some grease and I didn't really have time to spray it off because I'm kind of in a hurry here. I had to drop a lot of things off this evening and uh, we'll just get it sprayed back up when we get it back, hopefully if we got the time. But it's really muddy out around here. It just rained the other day and I think these people are going to be doing a little bit of clearing. So I mean, it's probably going to be back super muddy anyway. So, I'm not too worried about it. Like I said, we'll just clean it whenever I get it back. Okay, folks, so it is actually the next day after I got that mini excavator and the backhoe dropped off. And right now, I uh, took a couple tires and wheels off of my dump trailer. Just uh, two front ones on each side that have flat spots, I guess, because they set up so much higher. And when people hit their brakes, they're usually the first to grab and they get the flat spots on them. So uh, the good thing about the, having the stabilizer jacks on the dump trailer is I don't have to have a jack or anything to 
take the tires and wheels off of the trailer. We got the jack down on the front and the stabilizer jacks on the back here. And then my tires and wheels are off the ground just enough so I can spin them and take them off. Works out pretty slick. So we're gonna grab a couple new tires out of the garage here, throw them in the bed of the truck with the tires that I already have in there off the dump trailer. And we're gonna run those to the tire shop and have them changed out real quick. There's one, two more, two, and three. Get those shoved down in the bed a little bit better than take off here to the tire shop. Okay, folks, so I got the dump trailer behind me and uh, I'm in the truck right now on my way to pick up the mini excavator. The guy texted me, said he's done with it, so I'm gonna go ahead and go pick it up tonight and get it back to the house. And I should be picking the mini backhoe up tonight also, the BX23S. We got the new tires put on the dump trailer. It seems to be pulling a lot better. It's not bouncing around like crazy since the, I got the new tires on there and they don't have flat spots. But I had to go about 50 minutes away from my place to pick the mini excavator up. I went and dropped it off down here, which the guy paid a pretty big uh, delivery fee which my delivery fees uh, aren't near as expensive as other people I usually charge about a dollar fifty a mile so I'm not too too bad on my delivery fees but this was round trip it was a pretty good bit of miles I'd have to check and see how many miles it actually was I would say somewhere around 200 miles altogether for my trip to drop it off and they come back down and pick it up but there's some really pretty country down here we'll try to get you guys some views of some of these creeks and stuff that i pass i'm actually down here near the shawnee state forest kind of southwest of a hot in ohio i guess but I actually grew up not too far from here about 15 minutes and i've always liked it down here it's just really far from anything it's kind of out in the middle of nowhere but it's really pretty country so we'll get you guys some shots of some stuff around here I don't know if this is from the hard rains we just had the other day or not, but uh, road's kind of caving in right here. I'm sure they'll put some dump rock or something in here. Call it a day. There's a nice little cabin up in the woods. So I've actually got to lock my hubs in because there's a hill going up this road here and I didn't quite make it up the hill the other day in my truck and two-wheel drive because it's a gravel road and it's a fairly steep hill so it was kind of hard to get up so here's the road I'm on right now it's just an old gravel road it's a dead-end road but here's the hill that I couldn't make it up the other day it's gravel it's you can't you probably can't really tell on uh, camera but it's pretty steep kind of washed out. We got a lot of rain around here uh, this past week. Some tornadoes, just a ton of rain and everything's been flooding and washing out. I was coming up this hill the other day in two-wheel drive and I made it almost to the top until I got to where this, there's like a little, the road's washed out right there, right up in there. You guys can see that on camera. Then I hit that, I just kind of started bouncing and spinning. Didn't quite make it. So 
so this guy's actually not here. This is uh, just a piece of property he owns. He's kind of lives in the city and he said he's had this property for about two years and he was uh, making like a little road up that way. We'll show you guys when we go back out. He was uh, trying to make a road so he can put like a shed or something up here. So he has, I guess something, maybe store some stuff in or stay in when he comes down here from the city. And he said my mini's down here behind the barn. There it is right there. So here she is. We kind of, I kind of usually just look around it here whenever I go to pick a machine up. Usually I like a machine to be clean when I come to pick it up. Uh, it's obviously not clean, which he doesn't really have a good way to wash it off because he doesn't live here. He doesn't have a hydrant or anything like that here. This uh, piece of property here is pretty secluded. So it was dirty when I dropped it off. So it's, it was really muddy down here, which I knew it would be because we, like I said, we got a lot of rain, but everything looks pretty good. Looks like it's got some scuffs on it, but no big deal. Nothing to worry about, especially if you're gonna be renting equipment out. So I usually load it up a lot faster than that, but uh, I didn't want you guys to fall off of there. So you guys are just sitting on a tripod and not really mounted to anything good. You're just sitting on the front of my trailer there, so we got to do. So for the back of my mini, when I'm tying it down, I usually just use one chain. I just hook it. Then I usually just pull forward, tighten that chain up. I'm good to go. So uh, we'll set the bucket down here. It's kind of hard to do one handed while I hold you guys up. Aha. Just like that. So now we'll get our front chain hooked up here. I'll let you guys sit right there. Usually just throw her under the blade lift cylinder right there like that.
right over top of the blade. Man, how I hate hauling equipment around in this dump trailer. Just seems like so many extra steps opening those doors up and having to unpin them ramps, pull them out, instead of just dropping some ramps or having a, uh, a tilt deck trailer that you could just pull pin, drive up on. But I don't want to commit to buying a different trailer right now. I do have the little red trailer I use sometimes, but I still got to do some light work and some brake work to it before I can really start hauling equipment on it very far. I use it locally around my house because with the mini excavator and the little backhoe, that stuff's not too heavy, so I don't have to really worry about brakes too much. I just take my time with it, and I have some magnetic lights that I throw on it. So let's see if we can get a better look at this guy's project that he was doing up here. Okay, so uh, there was a big mound of dirt here. It was like an old logging trail, and I guess it was just a water break to keep water from running down through there. But uh, there wasn't a culvert here. He put this culvert in. Like I said, we did get a lot of rain uh, over the past week. It rained about every day <laughs> for the last five days. But he put the culvert in, and you can just see, he was actually gonna use this mini for like two days or something, but it just, it's so muddy out. He just didn't wanna use it no longer. So you can see all the standing water there. It's just, a mess right now but looks like he got a good bit of this cleaned up he said he's wanting to try to make a road so they can get a building up in here like i said but looks pretty good we're loaded up and we're going to head north okay folks so i made it back to my house with the mini i was going to go get the little back here tonight but the guy that had the back air rented it out called me and said he was wanting to Ran it for another day because he still had some more work he needed to do to his little project tomorrow. So we're going to let him keep that for another day and we'll go pick that up tomorrow. But now I guess we'll go ahead and show you guys the new machine we got to rent out. Okay, so this is the new machine, the new rental machine. It's a Kubota SVL65-2. Now this one here is used, I bought it used. It's uh, already been rented out one time. And uh, I was gonna try to buy a new one, but I couldn't get approved through Kubota. I went to my average, my, my bank, where I do all my banking. They actually approved me to get a loan. They, they would approve me for a brand new one, but the interest rate through my bank is a lot higher so it just didn't make sense to go buy a brand new machine uh, so I just went ahead and got this used Kubota so this is a, a cab machine I went ahead and decided to go with the cab unit because I figured the side glasses are going to be kind of hard to bust I mean yeah it can happen and 
it's got a back glass, but your, uh, your units that don't have a cab, they have a back glass anyway, so that could get busted no matter what. And really the only thing different that I really have to worry about mainly is uh, just the front windshield, the front door that rolls down, that getting busted. Like That's pretty much gonna be the biggest difference on my cab machine versus my a non-cab machine is the front glass getting busted which I'd say it's probably going to happen sooner or later, but I plan on doing some bush hogging with this Kubota myself. So I wanted to go ahead and get one with a cab because I cannot stand to bush hog without a cab. I do it all the time on a tractor and my allergies just kill me. So when I went and uh, was looking at new machines and I tried to buy a new one, I was going to get one with high flow, but this one was about the best option I could find as far as using machines. It was the best price machine and it just had the standard flow. I figured the high flow wasn't, it wasn't needed. I wanted it, I was gonna get it with a new one because it was only $1,000 more on a new machine. This new machine with the standard flow and the cab and everything, obviously, mine doesn't have a radio, but the one I was looking at had a radio, which is no big deal. I can put a radio in it for like 300 bucks, plug it right in. And I can also add the high flow, which I think that's like, I've read some different things, four, five, six thousand dollars to add high flow to this machine. But on a brand new one, if you wanted to upgrade to a high flow machine uh, through Kubota, if you just got it as a factory option, it was only a thousand dollars more. So I was going to get a high flow machine because I thought that was a no brainer for an extra thousand dollars to have high flow. Now the inside of the machine, it's pretty nice. Uh, I got some heat and AC. Your controls were down here. That right there behind me is a spot for a radio. I will probably get a radio eventually, but I'm not too awful worried about it right now. So here's kind of a view inside the machine and everything. Now it did have 110 hours on it when I got it. Now it's got something like 120. As of right now, I've only got the bucket, a smooth bucket. And I also have a set of forks over there behind the trailer so i've been thinking of different attachments i want to buy i definitely do want to get a bush hog i don't really care necessarily as much about renting the bush hog out because i mean it could probably be tore up but that's i haven't had a whole lot of people ask for a bush hog either um, i've had a few different people ask for uh, an attachment called a rock hound it's like a, a smooth bucket basically and it's got a box on the front here and it's got like a basically a conveyor belt that works inside there with metal tines on it and it slings rocks up into your bucket as you're backing up and then you can go and dump the rocks somewhere and get them out of your yard but it is a nice machine i'm really happy with it it's a 2020 model um I was really wanting a 75-3, but obviously I probably wouldn't have got approved for that anyway unless I went through my bank and then the payment and the interest and everything would have just been so high, it would have been unaffordable. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why I opted for the 65-2. It's because the price was a lot cheaper and my payment was going to be smaller. I was a little bit nervous getting into a bigger machine, a bigger payment like this, and possibly not renting it out as much as I want to. It ran it out the first week I had it, and this weekend here, don't think it's going to rent out, but like I said, it's been super uh, muddy around my house and stuff. We just had a lot, we had rain all week long around here, so there's not a whole lot you can do right now, because everything is just a muddy mess. But yeah, at my local dealer, now my Kubota dealer seems to be higher on prices than every other dealer that I usually check at around my house for some reason. I don't know why, but it's cheaper to go to different Kubota dealerships and buy new machines for me. Um, this exact machine at my local Kubota dealer was uh, like right around $68,000 and that was with a bucket. That was a standard flow machine. Like I said, the one with the high flow was an extra $1,000. And uh, I ended up getting this machine here for $50,000. That was with uh, that was with a pretty high interest rate. It was like a 7% interest rate through my local bank, which that's about as low of an interest rate as you're gonna get on a used machine through any bank. And uh, Kubota, they got a lot better uh, interest rates, but couldn't get approved through Kubota, so we just went through the bank and now I have a skid steer for rent. 
So if you folks have a bunch of different attachments for rent, let me know what rents out the best for a skid steer. I was thinking about possibly getting a tooth bucket and uh, just adding some things as I get the money coming in. I'm gonna start adding some different attachments like a rock hound and then I may buy a bush hog and whatever else people are asking for to rent out. But I'm kind of working on a limited supply of money here. So I'm just buying stuff as I go. Okay folks, so the biggest reason I went with this Kubota 65-2 is because of cost, the price of it. So, I was, like I said, I was kind of worried about the payment and everything. And this 65-2 was the cheapest option. I was wanting to kind of stick with Kubota because Kubota seems like they have good machines. I really like the roll-up door. And Kubota is one of my closest dealerships. So, it's pretty easy for me to get parts. I mean, it's like a 20 minute run from my house or 25, something like that. So since I started renting equipment out, um, a track skid steer has been the most asked about piece of equipment by uh, potential renters out of anything that I've kept track of. Like I've had some people ask for some uh, trenchers and a few other things that I can't really think of right now, but a track skid steer has definitely been asked about more than anything else other than maybe like a bigger mini excavator or something. And I'd like to thank you guys for watching and hopefully we catch you on the next one.